Hi, I'm Michelle McKinnon. I'm the Early Learning Coordinator with Holy Spirit Catholic Schools, which serves Lethbridge and surrounding areas. We, we have approximately 4,500 students in our, in our division, and my primary role is developing program for our pre-kindergarten children, so our three and four-year-olds. We have approximately 300 uh, children who, who take part in our programs. The purpose of this video today is to take a look at the, the professional development opportunities that Holy Spirit provides to our staff so that they're best equipped to provide the, the, the best programming for children so that children can succeed. We have, we like to, the, we call this video at risk or a promise. And we really like to see all children as being not at risk, but at promise, because given the correct supports and environment, all children can be all that they can be. I'd, I'd like to begin by talking about the team, our early learning team that we have in place at Holy Spirit Catholic Schools. Um, we employ two full-time speech-language pathologists who primarily look after the needs of the children with severe language delays. We also have a, a teacher who is a, a lead teacher who assists with programming on sites. But our, our most critical piece of our team is our frontline staff who work with the children on a day-to-day -day basis. We have our program leaders who are early childhood educators and not certificated staff. And because they are early childhood educators, Another reason why we want to provide them with very specific um, professional development and very specific skills that will allow them to, to provide and lead the, the class in, in a positive way. We also have, um, each program has a speech-language assistant who is su directly supervised by our speech-language pathologists. Their role is to provide language-based enrichment programming for all of the children. So they, they have a center set up directly in the classroom that will, and they, they'll invite children to, to attend. And every child will, will cycle through, the, will cycle through that, that center at some point during the day. And while while it, it may seem like like it's, it might be a boring thing, she usually has people clamoring to come see her because she's got the coolest games and and the best the best um, equipment and and whatnot. We also have um, program uh, unit funded um, educational assistants. Those the, those um, educational assistants have primarily are responsible for children who have extreme, extreme support needs. Um, and it could be anything from speech language delays, could be, any, uh, could be uh, syndrome based, but those children need, need a lot of, of direct facilitation in order for them to be successful within the program. We've moved, we've moved from um, what used to be a, a historically a pullout where those children would go to a speech room and, and work on whatever their goals are. We've moved that from that to an embedded program where all the goals are addressed at all times during the entire two and a half hours that the child has, is in the program. Research shows that tells us that, that most of the professional development that occurs for support staff and for teachers is typically a one-off um, session that, that looks at a specific skill base and then you go back to your classroom and you're expected to implement that without the support of the experts that, that we're delivering. And we have had sessions similar to that where we have had sessions that are looked at um, incorporating music into, into our, our programs on a, on a daily basis for instruction, for, for language development. Um, positive behavior intervention is really, is really another, another one that is 
is an ongoing, an ongoing professional development because ev everything's changing and each child does, has a different, has a different um, need or a different way that we need to support them positively so that their behavior is, is, is what, they, what it needs to be. Early literacy strategies is, is another ongoing um, professional development. Looking at, looking at ways we can provide support for children in their, in their um, pre-reading years. We're not expecting children, and it's not a developmentally appropriate for children to be, to necessarily have all their letters and have all their numbers when they're three and four. Some children do and some don't, but it's definitely a, a developmental continuum that, that each child will get to when they're ready to. Um, phonological awareness, so, so looking at, at how words work and how words are, are put together in, in sentences on their own. So we work a lot with rhyming, with um, breaking words into, into the different syllables. And we do all of that through play. And it's all through games, and it's all through fun, fun activities. Um, and, that's, and that's really the, the purpose of our, of our programs, is, is learning through fun and learning through play. Because that is the way, the best way for children to learn. Uh, speech language uh, training is provided by our speech language pathologists on an annual basis. Where, and so they, they will give the highlights on what is speech, what is language. And that's an, a nice refresher for all of our staff at the beginning of the school year. Handwriting Without Tears is another program that, that, we, that we use. It's looking at developing fine motor skills in young children. And it, again, very developmentally appropriate. Um, they're looking at, at manipulating Play-Doh and using magnets and, and whatnot to, to f sometimes form letters. Or, and, and a lot, again, the handwriting without tears has a lot of music incorporated into it as well. And so, so that's, that's another program that, that, is, that we use on a, on a consistent basis in our, in our programs. The cornerstone program for our division is a program called Hannon's Learning Language and Loving It. This is a, a quite an extensive program which incorporates eight class sessions. The class sessions last two and a half to three hours. And, in be, and in, within the sessions, the, the participants learn specific strategies on how to, how to facilitate language development in young children. And, and it's a cumulative program. So as they, as they learn one skill, next time they come back, they'll add another skill to it. But the really critical point with, with the learning language and loving it is that the two weeks in between class time, myself or two of our other trained, trained um, f trainers will go out to the program and we'll videotape the, the participant empl in employing the strategy that they learned that, that week. They have to have a written plan um, so an, an idea of, of where they're going with that particular strategy. And then we have some coaching time. And the coaching time, because it is adult learning, the coaching time is really designed for us to, to elicit responses from them on, you know, what were they really happy about? What were they proud about? What didn't go so well? And then for next time, what will they, what will they change so that that strategy will be more effective with children. This program is, is very, it's, it's designed to facilitate language development in all children, typically developing children, children with language delays, children who are learning English for, as, their, as, as their second language, as well as, as children who may be, who may, have a, um, 
a possibility of developing a language delay later later on. And the, the really the really nice thing about learning language and loving it is that it's a very natural um, it's a very natural way to facilitate language. And it happens on an ongoing basis during the entire time that the children are in program. So in keeping with the with the learning language and loving it, we've been we've been providing training for our staff for, for the past four years and to date have trained about 140 staff. Feedback from staff has been has been quite quite um, I, I very, very, very positive. It really empowers the staff to give them specific strategies that they can take back to the classroom and use immediately. And also, the video, which is initially the most dreaded part, ends up being, at the end of the program, what they reflect back on being the most useful part. Because then they can see themselves in action. And because sometimes you do things, or you, you, you may think you're doing things, but when you actually look at yourself in a video, you realize, ooh, yeah, yeah, maybe I'm asking too many questions. Maybe I'm being a little too directive. So, so that empowerment of staff. And also for the staff who have trained in the past, when the new participants come in, they, it, really, it really rejuvenates learning language and loving it. It looks at, it looks at um, staff having a common language. It looks at, at um, the, the new trainees looking towards the, those that have been trained in the past and saying, oh, you know, this strategy, um, it's not really quite working for me. So it, it just, it's, it's something that just keeps rolling along each year that we, that we train new staff. Some of the main components of learning language and loving it is that it's very much child-oriented strategies. It's looking at following the child's lead and looking at it being developmentally appropriate. We're not looking for children to do or to be more than what a three and four year old should and can be. The interaction promoting strategies, they begin with the interaction being between the adult and the child, but very quickly we look at peer-to-peer -peer interaction. So the, the program gives strategies not just for promoting language, but it promotes social interaction, and it also it also promotes um, promotes uh, literacy development um, through through book reading and and whatnot. And the language modeling strategies is is another is another key component with learning language and loving it. Modeling the proper language for children and having their peers model it back to them is really a powerful powerful way for children to, to very naturally develop the language skills that they need to succeed. So professional development is and will continue to be a very important component of, of early childhood programming within Holy Spirit Catholic Schools. The success that we've seen within, for our children with embedding program in, into, into the day-to-day -day just, just feeds feeds that, that need for, for ongoing professional development. In the next part of this series, we'll be looking at the structure and program development of, of the pre-kindergarten programs within Holy Spirit Catholic School.